At 12.23 p.m. on the 17th of October the year 2000, the 12.10 train bound to Leeds from London's King's Cross station derailed just 0.8 kilometres south of Hatfield station. There were 170 passengers and 12 staff members on board the 12.10 to Leeds. Over 70 people were injured by the crash and tragically four people lost their lives. The location of the derailment was on a curved section of rail between Wellham Green and Hatfield known as the Wellham Green Curve, which is located approximately 27 kilometres north of London's King's Cross station. The Wellham Green Curve was made up of four railway lines, a slow speed line and a fast speed line that ran down, that is away from London in a northerly direction, and a slow speed line and a fast speed line that ran up, that is towards London in a southerly direction. It was on the down fast line heading away from London that the derailment occurred. Curved high speed rail lines like those at the Wellham Green Curve are designed with a cant. This is an offset in the plane of the two rails so that the train travels around the bend on a slight angle so as to offset centrifugal forces. Much like how a race car track is designed on an angle around bends so that the cars won't slide off the tracks as they travel corners at very high speeds. The cant is designed to achieve exactly the same thing, to allow high-speed trains to maintain their speed around curved sections of track. As clever as this design is, it must be acknowledged that the high rail in these canted tracks experiences a greater load, greater stress, and therefore greater wear than other tracks. Railway tracks are not invincible. No material is. The very high contact stress caused by an 81.5 ton train rolling overhead causes fatigue cracks to form over time, known as rolling contact fatigue. If left unchecked, these fatigue cracks will get worse. They will grow over time, become deeper, and will weaken the rail. After collecting over 300 fragments of rail pieces and other such evidence from the crash site, forensic investigators are able to conclude that the derailment was caused by the fracture and disintegration of the high rail on the down fast line as the 1210 to Leeds rolled over it. The fracture and subsequent disintegration of the rail was made possible due to multiple pre-existing fatigue cracks. Now that investigators had answered the question, how did the crash occur? They had a much more important question to answer. Why? Why did the crash occur? Why wasn't the crash prevented? How was the track allowed to deteriorate into such an appalling state as to make this disaster possible in the first place? Investigators now turn their attention towards two key stakeholders, a company named Railtrack, who were the infrastructure controllers of most of Britain's railway, that is, the company who owned the lease to the railway, and Balfour BT Rail Maintenance Limited, who were one of the companies contracted out by Railtrack to take care of the maintenance work of the railway. Although Balfour Beatty had agreed to take care of all the maintenance work of the track, statutory liability still remained with Railtrack as they were the infrastructure controllers and therefore it was Railtrack's duty to monitor the maintenance work of their contractors. After trekking through maintenance logs, going through the minutes of meetings, through audit reports, engineering reports, and interviews with members of staff, investigators found that this working relationship between Railtrack and Balfour Beatty simply didn't work. What they found was a runaway system where the so-called infrastructure controller had lost all control of health, safety, risk control, and maintenance of the railway. And so, as negligence, a failure to meet one's statutory obligations and a failure of one's duty of care was deemed the reason behind the cause of the disaster and the lives lost. Railtrack, Balfour Beatty and a number of executives faced charges of manslaughter and breaches to the Health and Safety at Work Act of 1974. The charges of manslaughter were dropped. However, charges for breaches to the Health and Safety at Work Act were upheld and Railtrack was fined £3.5 million as well as court costs, and Balfour Beatty was fined £7.5 million as well as court costs. The Hatfield railway crash was not the only disaster to happen at the time. The Ladbroke Grove rail crash had happened on the 5th of October 1999, and the Southall rail crash on the 19th of September 1997. These two rail disasters resulted in a public inquiry where Chairman Lord Cullen made a number of recommendations for improved health and safety culture in the rail industry. 
with the Hatfield rail crash, these recommendations were given greater urgency. One of the greatest changes that came from this tragedy was when Network Rail, a newly created company owned by the Department for Transport, acquired rail track, ending the era of privatised rail and brought all maintenance work in-house once again. This resulted in Network Rail and the Department for Transport having a better understanding of the condition of their infrastructure and much greater control over its maintenance. Network Rail is dedicated to better project planning and to the health and safety of all those who use this infrastructure. The regret, however, is that so many people had to lose their lives before this became possible.